Welcome to Life is Birdful. I'm Anthony. Today we're going to be talking about a beer that it's so, its history is so intertwined with its designated special glassware that it's completely impossible to tell the story of either without kind of intermixing them. So today we're going to talk about the legendary Quack and the Quack Coach Glass. So Quack has kind of become one of the most iconic legendary beers from Belgium in recent years. And I think it has a lot to do with just how absolutely phenomenal it tastes. It's kind of renowned and regarded for its high quality, but I also think a lot of its fame and its notoriety has to do with its incredibly unique glassware. Very rarely are you gonna find some type of conical glass with a perfectly round bottom that is incapable of standing up on its own. You actually have to have a nice little stand to hold <laughs> hold it upright. And I think it's these two factors. Yes, it is an incredibly good beer that stands on its own. Ironic since uh, a lot of the attention it gets is from its glassware, which can't. So the history of Quack beer actually starts around 1791 at a small coach inn in the Belgian town of Dendermonde. It's kind of located in between Ghent and Brussels. So back then in the late 18th century, there would have been a whole lot of horse-drawn travel, a lot of carriages, a lot of stagecoaches that were uh, traveling up and down that road between these two major population hubs. And oftentimes people would want to stop off, you know, about the halfway point and get some food, get something to drink, maybe take a rest. And this inn was uh, becoming a bit of a hub, a known location, a destination really, for these coach travelers to stop off at. The Dehorn Inn was ran by a man named Pavel Kwok. Mr. Kwok began brewing his own beer at his inn to be able to sell and serve to these guests and these stagecoach drivers as they came through, kind of, uh, you know, as an incentive for people to want to stop in and, you know, see his inn uh, as opposed to the many other inns that are along the route. Now, interestingly, Mr. Kwok's beer became a bit of a destination uh, all on its own. People wanted to visit his inn and drink his beer because it was known for being incredibly high quality and just absolutely delicious. Uh, it was known for its dark, robust, strong flavor, but also just its insanely good quality, not to mention it was commonly regarded for its strength. Now, unfortunately, not much more is known about this original Quok beer, uh, other than that it was a dark beer, it was strong, it was apparently really good flavored, and it was uh, of typical style for the time period and the location. And all of that does make sense, seeing that lighter beers wouldn't really gain a strong foothold in Belgium for like another century, really. Now, unfortunately, the quok we have today is not quite the quok of the 18th century. The original recipe had long been lost to time after the Duhorn Inn's uh, closure, but uh, it was around the 70s when a mega brewery, the Bastille Brewing Company in Belgium, decided that they wanted to revive it, and uh, they kind of took ownership of the name, they bought the rights to it, uh, and they released a beer that I think would be a modern reinterpretation of that original recipe. It might not be the same, might not even be the same ingredients, but the concept was the same and the name was the same. So we're still left here with an incredibly delicious, well-renowned beer that is dark and relatively strong. Now, what I do find incredibly interesting is that according to its websites and uh, things like Untapped and Rate Beer and everything, this beer is actually marketed as a pale ale, which, I mean, I guess there are many darker beers in Belgium, uh, traditional styles and modern craft uh, Belgian interpretations, but pale, hmm, I don't know, bit of a stretch. Well, despite not really fitting the expectations of a Belgian Pell L, Quack has solidified itself as one of the most famous Belgian beer brands around the world, highly renowned for its complex, deep flavor, full of fruity notes, roast and toasted brown sugar and nutty flavors. The original Quack 
Amber Beer has become so successful that the Quok brand has actually rapidly expanded, allowing other styles under the Quok umbrella, like the Weedy Blonde and the Fruited Rouge, to take a foothold. Anyways, getting back into the history just a little bit. So, uh, as I mentioned, stagecoaches would frequently come to the Dehorn Inn to be able to drink Mr. Quok's beer and, you know, do their normal thing of resting and sleeping and eating and, you know, things stagecoach drivers are wont to do. However, things started becoming a little bit more difficult for Mr. Quok at the turn of the century. Uh, see, there was actually something kind of put in place known as Napoleonic Law. Napoleonic law was kind of like a reinterpretation of society from a legal standpoint that happened uh, across large swaths of Europe at this point in time, where uh, more strict rules and policies for how people were to function in society and the things they could and could not do and things that were once legal became illegal. And it was all just to kind of uh, bring forth a new era of order to society. One of these new orders under the Napoleonic law stated that stagecoach drivers were not able to abandon their coaches to like go inside to a restaurant or an inn, for example. Uh, there are a lot of theories why this may be the case, but I think one of the more prominent uh, ideas and theories behind it is that it just wasn't seen as a relatively safe or a smart idea to leave a bunch of horses, you know, attached to a big wooden cart just kind of unattended. This new law essentially meant that stagecoach drivers were no longer able to stop at the Dehorn Inn and drink Mr. Quok's beer. You know, they could pull up, they could let the patrons out, and the passengers could go in, they could do all that stuff, but the actual stagecoach drivers would have to kind of stay put with their horses. And that kind of decentivized many of them from, you know, uh, swinging into Mr. Quok's establishment. You know, why stop there when you couldn't really partake in the full experience when you could just push on through your trip or, you know, just stop anywhere at this point because it's not like it really mattered anymore. What I do find really funny about that whole thing is that essentially the law was like, hey, we don't want you stopping off and drinking because your horses might get wild instead of like, hey, we don't want people driving horses to become intoxicated. I I think that's kind of funny. Anyways, Mr. Quok decided that if the stagecoach drivers were not able to come in to drink his beer, he would have to figure out a way to get the beer out to them. So what Mr. Quok actually ended up doing was commissioning specially made glassware that would be perfectly designated and suited for a stagecoach driver. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how in the heck could this beer glass be good for somebody driving, right? Well, if you actually look at stagecoaches, they oftentimes have like a little bit of an accoutrement, some type of like gripper or holder that, you know, kind of look like that. And it was for several different things. I've seen some for whips. I've seen some for like lanterns or torches or something along that. But what he decided that he was going to do was he was going to brew kind of like a standardized glass that would fit perfectly into that little holster attached to the actual carriages themselves. That way the stagecoach drivers could pull up, they could get a beer brought out to them, they could hook it onto their actual stagecoach, and they could just continue on their journey, reaching over to take a sip as they want, whenever they want. They didn't have to stop and get out and drink, they could just drink and coach. This is why Mr. Quok's glass is known as the coach glass. Makes sense, right? I've actually seen some sources claim that Mr. Quok's glass was actually the first, like, cup holder in any type of like vehicle. And I think that's pretty unique. I think that's pretty interesting. Now the Pavel Quok coach glass is actually incredibly well engineered. It's a wide rimmed conical glass with an incredibly narrow center and a wide round bulbous bottom that isn't able to stand on its own. The actual height of the Quok glass is uh, kind of a bit of a problem for its bulbous bottom because if you were to actually let go of it, it's so top heavy, it would actually just fall over. And because the glass is so thin up top, so delicate, it would just absolutely shatter, like no questions about it. I mean, it makes sense 
because this glass was never designed to stand on its own. It was never designed to be on a flat surface just waiting for people to drink out of. It was always designed to hang from those coaches, as we mentioned earlier, you know? So, yeah, it is a bit weird, but, I mean, it was perfectly designed for what it was supposed to do. Wide enough to where it wouldn't slip out of its bridle, thin enough where it would actually fit into it, and... Like, the narrow part is so perfectly tapered in that even if you are just tilting it over in its holster, it's not going to fall out. You have to get it just ever so perfectly aligned. Additionally, the wide brim and the bulbous bottom allows for a perfect hand grip. You can actually get a whole lot of tension going on here between the top and the bottom of your hand. So if you were pulling it off of your cart, you know, and you're still on these bumpy roads and everything, you're still able to get a pretty good paw on it to keep it safeguarded that way you didn't drop it and smash it and most importantly lose your beer. So, I mean, the center still well designed, well executed. Regardless, stagecoach drivers, uh, became enamored with Mr. Quack, his beer, and his glassware, and now because they were specially tailored for them as a customer base, they frequented Mr. Quack's establishment more and more, and it allowed his beer to become more and more famous. And Quack and Quack's beer would remain relatively successful for nearly a hundred years, until, unfortunately, technology kind of surpassed it. We started seeing more adoptions of uh, additional or alternative traveling methods such as trains and eventually cars. And the stagecoach transportation industry just slowly dwindled and faded into obscurity. There was no more need for Mr. Quack's glass or his special, you know, coach holster. It, it just, it didn't have a function anymore, a purpose, and it kind of fell out of favor and into obscurity. And the glassware itself, like the actual beer, would not regain any type of relevancy again until around the 1970s, 1980s, when the Boston Brewing Company brought back out the quack. And they were like, hey, if we're bringing back the beer, let's bring back the glassware as well. Let's, let's you know, reunite, let's recreate that synergy, that harmony uh, between such a unique beer and such a unique beer glass. The difference is they did not have carriages to affix them to anymore because no one was riding around in carriages in the 70s. At least not a whole lot of people, I have to imagine. So what they actually ended up doing was creating its own special quack beer glass stand. And I think that's really what helped Quack establish itself as such a staple in the modern day Belgian beer scene. Because if you go into any bar, uh, especially in Belgium where glassware is just insane, no other country has crazier, more interesting, more unique glassware than Belgium. But even in Belgium, if you're walking into a bar, this is going to stand out to you. The weird glass is going to stand out. The wooden stand is going to stand out. People like trying to drink out of it. This makes me so nervous every single time. Ah. Oh man, it makes me nervous every time. <laughs> Luckily, if you're like me and you're one of those people that uh, gets social anxiety from standing out and looking weird or um, afraid of, you know, shattering a glass, uh, I've noticed that Quack has actually started marketing a secondary glassware for this that still maintains a bit of a conical shape, uh, but with a fatter, rounder, flatter bottom. And it looks kind of similar to some of the vase glasses or even the uh, the wheat vases that you will see in Germany, like the Hefeweizen glass or even some of the uh, Otter Pilsner glasses. But the point is, it was this oddity that really helped this beer stand out because yes, it is an incredibly good beer, especially for, you know, your, your Belgian amber beers. But here's the thing, Belgium has hundreds if not thousands of really good amber beers they needed something that would help them stand out in a sea of insane quality and it was this glass that helped them do it thanks for watching everybody i really hope you enjoyed and i hope you learned something about such an iconic beer brand and such a legendary glassware style remember there's a story in every bottle and that life is brutal cheers <laughs>